This is Twit. WWDC may also have a redesigned iMac. Oh, please, Apple, don't do this to me, please. <laughs> Um, I'm ready for a new iMac, so I'm excited about this. This is from Sonny <laughs> Dixon. Oh, yep. I can't afford it, but it, it's going to resemble the XDR. It's going to have very slim bezels, according to Sonny. The iPad Pro design language. What does that mean to you, Renee? I don't know what that means. So the only reason why I wonder is because he's got that separate from the, the Thanos snapped bezels. You know, if Apple usually snaps their fingers and takes half the bezels off, but that's what they did with the iPad Pro. So, and the, the iMac is already pretty squared off. Like it's already got similar language. So I'm not sure why those two things are separated. I'm also not, because I thought the new design was coming with the mini LED displays and rumor has it those displays have been pushed out till next year, unless mm -hmm. the iMac is going to debut those displays the way it debuted IPS panels, you know, several years ago. So mm -hmm. maybe this is going to be, and is it going to be an iPad, uh, an iMac Pro, uh, or is it going to be the regular iMac? Because I think well, if maybe, Apple has very limited amounts, it'll be make sense to be the Pro at first. Maybe the uh, the fact that it's going to use an AMD Navi GPU would give us a hint. Is that Alex considered a high level or low level GPU? I don't. I actually am not that familiar with it, so I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I think, think that's just the generation. Um, I don't think that's the power level. I think that's just their latest generation of graphics. It's cards. a Radeon, or it's not a but Radeon. I, I would it's guess a Navi. I would guess this is a pro yeah. level. This is a pro level. It, it, they're not going to do the base one this way. I don't think. Yeah. This but man, do I want one? Uh, Navi in cards yeah. include the Radeon RX 5700, the 5600 XT, and the 5700 XT. It, yeah, it's their new architecture for graphics cards. Navi is the architecture. Yeah. They're still Radeons. Yeah. Um, okay, but that does sound like maybe that leans a little more towards pro. Sonny says T2 chip. Clearly, he doesn't understand that everything Apple puts out from now on will have a T2 chip. <laughs> Until uh, they go T3, and then hopefully we'll get Face ID. Right. Which is why I'd always want, I want Face ID on this, too. Where's my T3 chip? Oh, okay. So that is relevant in the sense that it isn't the T3. There isn't yeah, Face well, cause ID. Yeah, well, because the T2 has no... The T2 is basically... I forget if it's an A8 or an A10. It's one of the earlier generation A-series processors adapted. And they would need... Uh, an A11 was sort of a newer engine. They needed a newer engine earlier than they could otherwise get it. So I think it uses... It leverages the GPU to do a lot of neural engine stuff. But it does have fingerprint. And then the A12... It, it has fingerprint, right? Yeah, it just doesn't have the neural network that you need to do the adversarial uh, face ID parsing um, because face ID stuff. isn't like a one yeah. and done. It's a it's an identification process. So they would need a new generation T chip to enable that. But boy, do I want that on an iMac? Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? You just come and sit down and it knows. It's yeah, you like and Windows all. Hello, but good. You know. Yeah, Hello is too slow. I mean, not too good. It's like secure. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's not secure and it's slow. So it's like why? Yeah. Um, and then and I think. Uh, I'm, I, I think well, the number one thing I'm happy about, Lori, is no more Fusion Drive. I can't believe yeah. they still sold that. for. It, it, it's crazy. It's such a bad idea. It's it's frustrating for users who still yeah. have a Fusion Drive. I have that on my iMac, and it is. It's a frustrating experience to like have to deal with that sort of in-betweenness, which I get it. I get that. You know, it's less expensive, but still good, but <laughs> not good enough. So again, though, this could be why this might be leaning toward an iMac Pro, because are they really going to just eliminate Fusion altogether? Uh -huh. I think it makes sense to eliminate it on the Pro models, but it, to keep the prices down, I'm not sure they're ready to eliminate that on the non-Pro models. Right. So I don't, I don't know, you know, this, I, we might still be having IMAX with Fusion drives all along, so we'll see. Yeah, the, they're Before still the 21 inch, they're still the low cost, and so maybe they will have that. It's such a bad idea. The idea was you have a little tiny, it was back from the days when SSDs were it too expensive. It was a great idea, a terrible implementation. Yeah, maybe that's it. it you had tiny yeah. SSD, a big spinning disk, you got the capacity of an old spinning disk, and theoretically yeah. you got the speed in some cases of the SSD, but it never really delivered. And for less money because SSDs were so expensive. Yeah. When That's really why they needed it. But I think that those days yeah. are long gone. So forget it. And especially if you have a T2 in there, which is the disk controller. Uh, it just seems sensible yeah. to... Just to have a good SSD, SSD in there and let people hang as much external storage off the back as yeah. they want to. Yeah, That's one advantage. That's one reason I love that, Thunderbolt 3. Yeah, Thunderbolt yeah. 3 means I can have a full speed external drive if I yeah. don't mind spending thousands of dollars for it. <laughs> yeah, that's all got to come down to. A lot of the stuff, like, we're, it, it reminds me of, like, the, the old scams where, oh, CDs will be cheaper than cassettes. Just wait. Like, it never happens. Like, they always yeah. promise you the new thing will be cheaper. Ends up being triple well, the price and going down to double the price. You know, actually, I would argue that today, 
Oh. Today, a tape is probably more expensive than a CD because it, yeah. tapes are kind of obsolete and rare and vintage. Hipster. They're hipster, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were, tapes Tapes were half the cost of CDs back in the early 90s. Um, but we're talking about uh, 20, I think it, if I remember correctly, it was 21 cents a unit versus uh, 44 cents a unit uh, for the CDs. Um, you know, and, and that's 1990 prices. So we're, and so CDs were twice as much money. They somehow decided to multiply that out to twice as much money on the, uh, the end user cost, even though the Delta, even though it's twice as much, the Delta was 20 cents between the production cost between CDs and, and, and cassettes, even in, in the early nineties at their height. And this is why, this is what created, you know, Napster. <laughs> right. yeah. You know, like you know, just like you know, just just the, the they just, it was just highway robbery. Yeah. So we need the now. It was a good time to be in the record business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, do you think this will replace the existing iMac? God, I hope it doesn't. iMac Pro, because I just I spent yeah, seven thousand dollars on an iMac Pro. I don't. But they're not going to take it away. So, like, this is the same thing with the iMac. Like, there's a bunch of people who are like. Oh, I should wait and not buy an R Mac now. No, like if, if you use the software, if you're like in production, everything works on the current generation stuff beautifully. There's all the next one is going to be a Reve board. You, if you, unless you're an early adopter and you're and you have like a little bit of pain that you're willing to take, buy the last and best of the current instead of the first and probably worst of the next thing. So all those people with iMac Pros, those are going to be great for a while now. Let people like me and probably Leo, maybe Alex. <laughs> Buy whatever comes next, and we'll tell you how well it works. And then in a year or two, you'll be happy to buy one that's really stable. I love my iMac Pro, except for all the Zoom, big blue button, bozo stuff I have had to install on it over the years. But, I, <laughs> but it's nicely configured. I have to say, I don't. Yeah. Need, I have no use for the speed, as we talked about last week. Mm. But it's. I like it. It's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a great display. And if this has a mini LED, it would be phenomenal. <laughs> I if can't it's got see an any, XDR but class display. You know what it's going to get me? It's going to get the bezel this display is going to get me. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. it's going to be the I XDR display. Mean. It's going to be the color. Like It's going to look better than real life. It's going to make you want to live. And the first time when we, we went to that first Apple event where they announced the 5K iMac for the first time, it was like, okay, this screen looks better than my real life. And then they added uh, P3 color gamut. I'm like, okay, now it looks way better than my real life. I just want to go inside well, and, and live and in there. And they keep doing that. And I think that you're going to see, I mean, I don't know if this one's going to have it or not, but we are moving very quickly towards the 128K 120 frame per second HDR, which I've said before. And every time Apple looks like it's getting close to a new monitor or a new iMac or whatever, I go, well, maybe this is the, maybe this is the one that we see that. 10-bit color, uh, Alex. Move. 10-bit. Yeah, 10 and, it, and it just. The display. Because when you see, yeah, when you see those, I've seen, I've, you know, 120 frame per second, 8K uh, HDR looks like you're looking into a window. Like it doesn't look like a monitor anymore. It just looks like you're looking you're into helping. another reality you're on the other helping. side. You're not helping. And right well, now, all the Apple displays do. Um, <laughs> right now, all the Apple displays do temporal dithering because they're 10-bit pipelines, 8-bit displays. So what they do is change the color slightly in microsecond intervals, and our brains just read them as there being more colors. But when you have like very very small level gradients, you can still see banding, and you can you can see where that happens sometimes. And when we get to actual 10-bit panels with peak brightness and deep, deep blacks, you know, peak sustained brightness. And it is going to look like another world. 